Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this great people of yours? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. O Lord, how I love your law. O Lord, how I love your law. I have said, O Lord, my portion is to obey your words. The law from your mouth means more to me than large quantities of silver and gold. O Lord, Lord how I love you, your law. Let your merciful love console me by your promise to your servant. Show me compassion that I may live, for your law is my delight. O, o Lord, Lord, how I love you, your law. This is why I love your commands, more than finest gold, why I rule my life by your precepts and hate false ways. O oh Lord, how I love you, Lord. Your decrees are wonderful indeed. Therefore, my soul obeys them. The unfolding of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. O oh Lord, how I love you, Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You know that in everything God works for good for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many, many brothers and sisters. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. 
Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net, which was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into vessels, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This Sunday's Gospel offers us three different parables about the kingdom of heaven or the reign of God. The last one, the parable of the dragnet, is very similar to the parable of the weeds and the wheat, encouraging us that while things are messy and people seem to get away with corruption and evil, in the end, God and good will have the final word. I want to focus a little more on the message of the first two, the parables of the hidden treasure in the field and the pearl of great price. In the parable of the treasure, the person in the story is so convinced of the value of that treasure that they willingly sell everything to buy the field in which the treasure is hidden. We don't know how the person found the treasure in the field, but from the moment they discovered it, all they want is to own the field that contains the treasure. They go off to do the work of selling all that they have, with only one thing in mind, the treasure that they have set their heart on. These days, we don't hear very much about treasure buried in fields. We do sometimes hear, though, of people who take a huge risk on the stock market, withdrawing all their shares and investments, selling their assets to invest all of their financial resources in something that they believe will make them rich beyond all imagining. If they are wrong about the value of their investment, they stand to lose everything. We know, too, of the sacrifices that are made by top sports people. Hours of daily training, careful eating, early nights to be in the pool or at the track, long before the other commitments of their day. They may endure injuries and long hours of struggle and difficult training, but they hold the dream of records broken, of a gold medal, of the recognition as a top athlete in their field. The desire to excel in their chosen sport is the treasure, the pearl of great price they will give anything in exchange for. In a similar way, in relation to the reign of God, we are called to invest ourselves wholeheartedly. This passionate wholeheartedness impacts every aspect of our lives, where we invest our time, our money, and our energies. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, whose feast we will celebrate tomorrow, experienced a profound shift in where he found his treasure. Throughout the first 26 years of his life, his treasure was about impressing others with his talents and winning fame and fortune. After Ignatius was hit by a cannonball at a battle in Pamplona, he had to endure a long and very painful convalescence. 
In the process of reading and reflecting over those many months, his heart shifted gradually to wanting God only and the things of God. Nothing else mattered more. He let go of his position and his wealth and his desire to impress others and gave himself wholeheartedly to the things of God. Looking at the lives of the saints, one sees a common thread, a focus on God and something about which God is passionate. Often what distracts us from our pearl of great price are not bad things, but good and worthwhile things or activities. But if we are to possess that pearl of great price or the treasure in the field, we may have to be willing to let go of our attachment to those things to make space. We may have to sell our other pearls to be able to afford the cost of this one. Perhaps the way we discover a treasure or a pearl of great price is really a falling in love. When we are truly and deeply love someone or something, we will let go of our own preferences and attachments. We make sacrifices, but they are made joyfully and willingly for the sake of that one thing that really matters. Finding the treasure in the field or the pearl of great price in some way is a falling in love with God. The discovery of a relationship with Christ that matters more than anything else. For each one of us, the way we express that great love of Christ will have its own distinctive flavor. We may do it as a parent in a relationship or in the work that we are gifted and called for. When we wake up in the morning, we know that it is our relationship with God and God's particular call to us that matters more than anything else. It drives all our choices and decisions. We are willing to let go of whatever might distract us from that purpose. There is a beautiful prayer which has become known as the Arupe prayer. It captures our lives when our hearts are wholeheartedly set on God as our treasure. Hold on to the words as I share them with you now. Nothing is more practical than finding God than falling in love in a quite absolute final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the mornings, what you will do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, who you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and with gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word, and help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.